The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. The second of the Advent candles is lit to remember the prophets. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophet said you would bring peace and save your people in trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas tide and show all the world God's love.
When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness, and he will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you call us to repent of our sins, soften our proud and stubborn hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you declared the forgiveness of God. Teach us to forgive one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you search our hearts and show us the truth. Direct us in your way of righteousness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, Purify our hearts and minds, that when your Son Jesus Christ comes again as Judge and Saviour, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord and our God. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures for ever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the Sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. 
I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. My mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord and my God. Our reading this morning speaks a lot about preparation. We do a lot of preparation, don't we, in our lives? We may not think we do, but like most people, I would imagine we get up in the morning and think to ourselves, oh, what have I got to do today? What's on the agenda? And we begin to prioritise the things that we need to do. And if you're particularly good at preparing, you may have a diary already labelled with everything you need to do. Something that I fail miserably at quite often. There are other types as well, other things we can do. There are times when we go driving our vehicles or cars or whatever, and we encounter traffic jams. Some people will have preparations. They will already know in advance other routes to take. They may not even go down the routes where they know there's going to be traffic. It's preparation. We may also look to the skies. If first thing in the morning when we get out of bed and look out the window, what's the weather doing? What is it doing? Is it raining? Will I need an umbrella? Is it freezing cold? Will I need a thick coat? Preparing for exams helps us to reduce the risk of failing. It increases the risk of us getting a pass. That's something again which um, I struggled with as a, as a young boy. I used to really struggle with preparation for exams. So it's all about reducing risk, isn't it? The risk of being caught out or being unprepared. So what about this preparation that Mark's talking about this morning? <clears throat> He tells us that John came to prepare the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with us. But the gospel, this, this reading comes at the beginning of the gospel. And as we know, the gospel stories are designed primarily in the first instance, often the first few um, chapters are there for those who haven't known Jesus, who do not know the good news. John is preparing the way for Jesus, preparing the minds of the people to expect something fantastic, to expect Jesus. But we're already Christians, I hear you say, and you're right. We've been saved because we believe. So the preparation that we need to do is not based on anything that, um, that we can increase our chances of being saved because we're already saved. It's not like preparing for a guest to come, an important guest, where we clean away everything, all the rubbish, out of the house, do a bit of washing up quickly, put our best clothes on and our best smile. Meanwhile, all our dirty crockery and bits and bobs and rubbish and that is tucked away in corners so that the guests cannot see it. They only see the side we want to show them so that they don't know what kind of a mess we normally live in. <clears throat> so, Jesus, as I said, is coming into the world. This is this time of year's message. Jesus is coming again. But why do we only think about it now? Why does it suddenly take centre stage? We celebrate 
the birth of Jesus, but we also think to the future, Christ coming again. And really, the preparation that we do as Christians, it's something along the lines of, I think it's verse 5, where John says the preparation that we're told that he's doing is for the forgiveness of sins. That's the preparation, and that's where we're at. It's shining a light on our failures and not hiding them, preparing to come before the Lord. What a wonderful thought. Not having to hide our failures where we've got it wrong. It can be quite uncomfortable if we wanted to speak to a complete stranger or somebody about our failures and the things we don't get right. And perhaps the things during the day that we're not proud of that we did. But when we come before the Lord, we feel a need, a genuine need, at least I do, a genuine need to confess, to think about the things that I've done wrong and where I've got it wrong. That's the preparation we're talking about. It's the one we do on Sunday before we have our service. We have a time of preparation, don't we? Where we bring our failures before the Lord. So, it's also a time when we do it in the evening time. Perhaps many of you might, like me, before you go to bed, bring the things and the problems you have before the Lord. It's like doing a spiritual health check. Uh, putting our metaphorical house in order, if you like. Putting things straight, just clearing away the debris of the day, the things that we've done wrong, where we've got it wrong. If we don't do it like this, this is, our, this is our preparation as Christians, it's very challenging to hear God's voice. It's particularly amongst all the other cacophony of voices that inhabit this world. And so, as I said, at the end of the day, I bring my thoughts before the Lord and I've learnt to prepare them as a prayer and allowing my heart to be convicted. It seems to me to be very important before I speak to God that I wipe away the things which may be blocking my path to speaking with a genuine heart and a genuine thoughts of um, others. If you're troubled with the thoughts of the world, it can weigh you down, it can take your mind off of what it is you're trying to connect to. We're trying to connect with God. It's that still small voice that we're challenged to hear that the preparation we do provides us the platform to do that. And so in thinking about it and just bringing these problems before God, I find myself just thanking God for doing it all for me so that I don't have to. He's already wiped my sin clean. So those sins of ours which we concentrate on, those stagnant pools of despair, those difficulties which we encounter, become like crystal clear water. What a wonderful thought that is. Wiped clean. No more sin, just through preparation. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our lives through faith 
and fills us with his love. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, prepare our hearts to be witnesses to your Son, that in word and deed we may proclaim his kingdom of peace. Send us ahead as messengers of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who don't have a voice to speak for themselves, for the marginalised and the rejected. Help us to hear their voices and to speak boldly on their behalf. Send us ahead as messengers of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. We pray for those whose lives are burdened by past hurts and wrongs, for the abused and for abusers. Help us bring healing, reconciliation and repentance to troubled hearts. Send us ahead as messengers of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who speak for us, for politicians and for leaders. Help us speak clearly to them of true justice and mercy. Send us ahead as messengers of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick and for those who have died, for those in pain and those who mourn. Help us to comfort the disturbed by your Holy Spirit. Send us ahead as messengers of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. 
We pray for our church, for all who serve and worship here. Help us prepare the way of the Lord in our hearts and in the hearts of others. Send us ahead as messengers of your kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom. The power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.